evidence world's toughest anti-smoking laws not working. Labor's plain packaging fails as cigarette sales rise. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And how about that for news? After a High Court challenge by the tobacco industry, the threat of $3 billion a year in damages and warnings about the assault on freedom, tough new plain packaging laws for cigarettes don't even work. And it must be true because it's a front page exclusive in The Australian. Labor's nanny state push to kill off the country's addiction to cigarettes with plain packaging has backfired, with new sales figures showing tobacco consumption growing during the first full year of the new laws. Smoking has increased. Can you believe it? Well, as you may have guessed, the answer is no. The public health expert who chaired the government panel recommending the new laws, Professor Mike Daub, told MediaWatch the Australian's front page story is rubbish. Every bit of the report is dodgy, from the way it was set up to what's in it to the lack of analysis. Well-known economist Stephen Kukoulis, writing in his blog The Kook, was equally scathing about the Australian scoop. Fortunately, the story is wrong. According to Kukoulis, who has written for the Australian stablemate Business Spectator, tobacco consumption in the first quarter of 2014 was... The lowest ever recorded. It is a great depression for tobacco sales. To be precise, said the kook, government stats showed consumption of tobacco and cigarettes was... 5.3% lower in the March quarter 2014 than in the December quarter 2012 when the plain packaging laws were introduced. The Kooks figures come from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. And if they are to be believed, those official stats make that Australian headline and much of the article either misleading or just plain wrong. So, what's going on? Well, to quote Kukulis again... It seems like the Australian is pushing, in a high-profile front-page story, baseless information fed to it from pressure groups with a vested interest to sell more tobacco and cigarettes. So what is the basis for the Australian story? Well, it's relying on the tobacco company's claim that they sold 59 million more cigarettes to retailers in 2013 than they did in 2012. But let's ask a couple of questions. Do the figures mean more people are smoking? Well, no. The industry admits the number of smokers fell in 2013 by 1.4%. Ah, uh, so are the people who do smoke smoking more? Uh, no again. The average number of cigarettes smoked per person also fell in 2013 by 1.4%. So, this second headline in The Australian... Plain fact, more people smoking... ...is also just plain wrong. As the tobacco industry admits, but the Australian did not, the rise in wholesale cigarette sales figures is almost certainly explained by retailers trying to beat a rise in tobacco tax last December. Now, the Australian also quotes surveys from New South Wales and South Australia to back its claim that smoking is on the rise, but in fact the figures don't support that conclusion. So, one might ask, along with Professor Daub... Why are they running this story? Perhaps part of the answer is that the tobacco industry's profits have been hit by plain packaging as people switch to cheaper brands. And does another part of the answer lie with Christian Kerr, the author of The Australian's Exclusive? Kerr is a regular writer for that leading conservative think tank, the IPA, or Institute of Public Affairs. And the IPA is partly funded, although it loathes to admit it, by the tobacco industry. Just before the last election, Kerr gave this advice to the coalition in the IPA review. End the nanny state to win. A majority of Australians, 55%, believe the country is becoming a nanny state with too much government intervention and control of people's day-to-day -day lives. Kerr linked growing concern about the nanny state to the new plain packaging laws for cigarettes. And just to make his own views clear, he added, Nanny statism may give its enthusiasts a sense of moral superiority and general worthiness, but everyone else finds it simply offensive. Well, not everyone. Although the IPA's former director of intellectual property, Tim Wilson, is certainly among them. Back in 2010, Wilson and the IPA were all over the media, warning that Australian taxpayers could face $3 billion a year in damages if plain packaging went ahead. That also turned out to be just plain wrong. But four years later, the war over plain packaging is now being waged in Britain. So it's great news for Big Tobacco that the Australians' claim about the laws not working here has lit up the British press. Australian anti-smoking laws backfire as sales rise. 
plain packaging has backfired in Australia. Don't bring it to the UK. Talk about unintended consequences. The Australian Plain Package Cigarette Initiative, introduced in 2012, has backfired. Instead of curbing smoking, smoking has actually gone up. That sort of coverage could be worth billions of dollars to Big Tobacco if it keeps plain packaging at bay. It will also be useful in Ireland, where Parliament is set to debate new plain packaging laws introduced last week. So it's not surprising that Professor Daub tells MediaWatch... The tobacco companies want stories in the UK that will say plain packaging hasn't helped in Australia. That's the main game for them at the moment. And how lucky they are that the Australian will play that game for them. But it comes at a cost to the paper's reputation. Not only has the Australian allowed an IPA spear carrier to lead its front page, it has let him use figures that the government says are misleading and to make claims the experts say are garbage. And all in the service of what? Freedom? Truth? Individual liberty? Not according to Professor Daub. This is the tobacco industry up to its dirty tricks again. It's just a beat up, it's a dodgy report, it's a dodgy industry. And always bear in mind, this is an industry that relies for its profits on a product that kills one in two regular users. The Australian's editor Clive Matheson told MediaWatch he was entirely comfortable with the story. He also told us Christian Kerr is not an IPA member and defended the report by saying, We are right to question the efficacy of a public health measure that credible data suggests is doing little more than encouraging smokers to switch from more expensive brands to cheaper brands. Yes, the Australian is right to question it, but not to make claims that smoking has increased and the law has failed when these are simply not supported by the evidence.